Hello, hello, hello. I am Axel Cannon, and this is Stupid Game Experiments. 100 days ago, I started an epic odyssey, a challenge that few souls are brave enough to begin, and even fewer have the fortitude to finish. It's called the Hashtag 100 Days of Game Dev Challenge. So it's not the most creative name anyone has ever come up with, but it is pretty self-explanatory. Every day for 100 days, do something involving or related to game dev, and make a post about it on Twitter. Pretty straightforward. Except it's kind of not. In this video, I'm going to offer a sort of sideways take on the hashtag 100 days of game dev challenge that you can take or leave as you see fit. If you want a more straightforward but still excellent take on the challenge, check out Papercut's video about his experience from earlier this year. First off, I should point out that there is no official governing body of the hashtag 100 days of game dev challenge or anything like that. You can really do it however you want. So I'm not suggesting the viewpoint I'm going to offer in this video is the right one. I'm only going to suggest that it's one worth considering when approaching this challenge. Okay, so here it is. What I propose is that the hashtag 100 days of game dev challenge is actually not about game dev at all. That may seem ridiculous, but let me explain. The theory behind the hashtag 100 days of game dev challenge is that you will get more game development done because it forces you to consistently get at least something game development related done every day for 100 days. However, as I already said, there's no official governing body or anything like that. Nobody is going to be checking up on you to make sure you meet the requirements for the challenge. It's completely up to your own self-discipline whether or not you remain consistent with it or finish it at all. The thing is, if you're the type of person with the self-discipline to finish the challenge, then you probably don't need it because you already have enough discipline to work on your game on a regular basis. On the other hand, if you don't have the self-discipline to work on your game on a regular basis, then you probably don't have the discipline to stick with this challenge either. In fact, based on watching some people's progress with the challenge, if you are the type of person that already has the discipline to work on your game on a regular basis, this challenge may actually have the opposite of the intended effect for you. Many people that already had plenty of dedication to working on their game carried that dedication over to this challenge which seems like it should be a good thing. However, the idea behind the challenge is that you have no 0% days, but 0.000001% is still more than 0%. There were some days when all I had time to do was open the game engine, create a file I knew I was going to need, and then close the engine again. Done and done. Similarly, when I was following paper cuts on his journey, he would routinely find ways to work his requirement for that day into other activities that he was already engaged in, like checking out a park he was visiting for reference material for art in his game. Many people didn't take this approach, though. Rather than allowing themselves to get just the barest minimum done on some days, including finding creative ways to work it into their other scheduled activities, they tried to get something of substance done every single day. These people were usually already dedicated to working on their game and had a system that worked for them already. Trying to increase their efforts to this new pace caused them to extend themselves beyond what was already working for them. This often led to burnout and finding out that they no longer liked working on their game. Now, none of this is to say that I don't think there are any benefits to this challenge or that it's not worth doing. There is obviously a niche of people like Paper Cuts that already have the discipline to accomplish their goals, but don't have the experience in game development to know what they need to set as goals when developing a game. For them, the hashtag 100 days of game dev challenge is probably a good place to start. However, I don't think that's the biggest benefit that most people will get out of the challenge. As I said in the beginning, I think the biggest benefit actually has nothing to do with game development at all. I think the biggest benefit for most people is that it gets you to post something about game development to your Twitter account every single day. Whether you're trying to build a game dev YouTube channel or create your own video game, self-promotion on social media is something that people routinely wait way too long to start and don't invest enough time in. I know I'm horrible at this, but the hashtag 100 days of game dev challenge gave me something to post about every single day. It didn't matter if it was something minor and uninteresting because it was part of the bigger challenge and that made it important enough to tweet about. And every one of those tweets has the possibility of attracting a new follower or starting a conversation with someone new in the community and further building your social media presence on Twitter. Viewing the purpose of the challenge as focusing on social media rather than on game development also helps to remove the pressure to do something substantial on your game every day of the challenge, because that's not the focus. 
You still have to do something related to game development every day, obviously. But even if it is only the most minor of contributions to your game, throwing up your daily tweet for the challenge is still getting the social media benefit of the challenge. I came to this conclusion about the purpose of the challenge because when I finished the challenge, I didn't feel like I had really accomplished anything. I went back and looked at my tweets and I had actually done a lot of things. Some of them I posted like doing my first game jam, others I plan on making videos about in the future. However, everything I did, I would have done regardless of participating in the challenge. The only thing that really changed for me was that I posted a tweet about it every day and that was actually a huge benefit to me. As I said in the beginning, if you don't like this perspective, that's fine. You don't have to use it. The hashtag 100 days of game dev challenge can be for you whatever you want to make it. However, if you are currently in the middle of the challenge or considering doing it in the future, maybe this will help you get a little bit more out of it. If you want to let me know your thoughts on this perspective or how the challenge is working out for you, you are always welcome and encouraged to let me know down in the comments. Even if you don't want to post your own comments, they are still worth checking out to see what other people's perspectives are. And if you absolutely hate this idea, but can't be bothered to leave a comment, well then, I guess that's what they created the dislike button for. Personally, I'm not sure that I'll do the challenge again. Not because I don't think it was worthwhile, I think it did a great job of giving me a reason to post to Twitter every day. I just have an idea for something that I think would work even better. However, I'm not ready to announce that yet, so if you want to find out what that's going to be, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss that video. However, that does wrap up this video, so as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.